from the young to the old, we like to touch on an important topic for many of us, and that is raising the retirement age. You have been calling on more employers to voluntarily raise the retirement age of their workers beyond the statutory requirement of 62. What has the response been like, Minister? Well, the response has been pretty decent. Uh, I wouldn't say that we have earth-shaking results. At the moment, if I can remember correctly, we have 50-plus companies that have voluntarily either raised uh, the retirement age or the re-employment age. And the workers are very appreciative of these uh, moves. Has there been resistance? You asked us this question yes. earlier, right? Yes, <laughs> Before we started, you asked us, Lance and I, what we thought. We said, yeah, go for it. It's cool. Absolutely, and yes. we shared with you our ages. And can I do this for you? On of end? course, yes. Okay. yes. Lance is 56 and I'm 62. And we're very proud to say mm. our ages, you know, to the public because we're still doing what we love and we're unafraid to learn new skills you know and unafraid to say you know I can't do this or yes I can do this so talking about raising retirement age has there been some resistance well, any yes. resistance yes I mean employers are not unfair in saying some of these things they are worried about cost impact mm -hmm. and cost impact not just in the dollar sense of uh, pay but also health issues, perhaps, of the older workers. But importantly, they also tell me that, well, if we can train them up, like Susan, you say you're 62. <laughs> I am. But you're updated. You are relevant. You are skillful in the things that you do. I try so, to be. So, you know, to the employers, most of my employers are fair people. So they say that, Susan, you are productive. I pay you this X amount. You deliver that X amount of productivity. Yeah, I don't look at your age. So workers have to do our part as well. We've got to stay up to date with the relevant skills. We've added skills, hopefully, so that we can be productive. And age will not really be that much of a factor if we are skillful and we keep healthy. Mm. I guess uh, the big question also is, uh, would the NTUC also push for the restoration of CPF contribution rates for workers above 55 years old to not only ensure retirement adequacy, but also to encourage seniors to continue working? Oh, yes. We have been doing that actually for quite a while. And we think that this is a good uh, rethink of uh, our CPF so that indeed for aging population, how to plan for adequacy of retirement, so on and so forth. It is, I think, a necessary thing to do. There are suggestions, and you would have heard these suggestions, of raising the CPF contribution. And there has been an, an IPS study recently, and you have those figures, Minister, right? Uh, if a 55-year-old in 2018 can actually save Thirty-one to one hundred and forty-five thousand dollars more. If the full CPF rates were restored, full rates were restored, then you know, in, this is the ten-year time frame from fifty-five to sixty-four. Yes. It will then double their eventual CPF life payouts. What are the possibilities of some of these suggestions? And you would have heard these yeah. suggestions on the ground, I am sure. Challenges? Can it be done? Can there be a middle ground? Maybe. I think so. As I said, uh, our employers, our unions and our government, we have a very good uh, working relationship. In fact, we form a tripartite working group to look at re-employment age and retirement age. And CPF is one of those uh, subtopics within the work group's uh, work scope. So we can expect them to give us a formal report sometime soon.